Worry is a prayer for what we don't want. Okay, ladies, in light of what is happening globally, I have actually postponed my Friday Reflect um, podcast because I wanted to see where this was going. And I wanted to dedicate today's podcast to being proactive in coping. So there's many different aspects of which we can take or I can take this conversation. And as somebody who attracts women, um, a lot of times your pain points are understanding your children's behavior, um, you know, being able to balance it all. And so here we are with our routines shifting and changing. So depending on where you are in the world, you're going to have different uh, criteria and expectations of you. But I'm noticing that two of the biggest pain points for people right now, well, there's actually kind of three. One, your children are being taken out of school for a long period of time. Two, your work schedule is shifting and you might be able to work from home, um, which of course causes you know childcare issues, um, emotional and mental health issues, right? Being able to cope with the stress. So in order to serve you best, what I've decided to do is cultivate a community and we created a online pop-up Facebook group. So the Facebook group is dedicated around these three things. I'm going to be um, interviewing and not even so much interviewing. I'm going to do Q&As with um, some colleagues of mine who are experts in the field of homeschooling and educating our children, um, you know, working from home and mental health, emotional, physical well-being. Everything inside this Facebook group is action and strategy oriented. So this is not a support group for coping. This is, here is my question, here's how we're going to solve the problem. So you're welcome to head on over to my name, heatherchauvin.com forward slash community. heatherchauvin.com forward slash community. And that will bring you directly to the Facebook group. All you have to do is request to join and um, my team will, you know, get you inside the Facebook group and we're going to slowly start with homeschooling structure and everything like that. I want this to be focused. I want it to be of service to you. And I also want you to know you've got this. You have got this. So we've been preparing for this for a while. This is not so much about the disease itself. I'm not worried about the disease. What I'm worried about is the boundaries, the proactiveness of society, which is really interesting to me because I thought, dang, if the world did this every year, imagine how much disease would dissipate. The common cold, the, you know, like every year it was kind of like a reset. Like everybody, we're just stopping our lives for a few weeks and we're going to make you incredibly uncomfortable. And we're going to crash the economy temporarily and we're going to kick up the dust and create a shit storm just so that everyone can sit and pause. And pausing is incredibly uncomfortable, right? We have to cancel plans. You can no longer travel. Depending on where you are, you can leave your home or limit your um, interactions. But hopefully, hopefully you fucking have enough toilet paper because dang, who would want to run out of fucking toilet paper? I do not understand this. Anyways, you're here. We're good. You're safe, right? You're safe. It's just uncomfortable. That's it. So all of our emotions kick up. Fear, worry, doubt. But guess what? The world is just being proactive right now. They're just being wildly proactive. That is it. You know when I tell you to do all the work that you need to do in your green zone? 
about taking care of your body, drinking your water, meditation, journaling, being so proactive. How do you want to feel? Who do you want to be? So that when these red zone moments happen, we're prepared. I was um, asking the ladies inside of my mastery coaching program, which is open, by the way. So if you're interested in that, you can head on over to heatherchauvin.com forward slash mastery. And they're like, Heather, I've been preparing for this moment. All of the tools and strategies and everything you've taught us throughout this program, I, I'm, I'm coping well. I'm coping better than I would have. So understand that if you're already living in a crisis state in your life and then more discomfort happens, shit hits the fan even more, which is why it is so important for us to be proactive instead of reactive. So the world is just responding in a very proactive state right now, right? They're seeing what has happened in other countries and they're like, okay, Let's stop this before it happens. There is nothing to worry about. Absolutely nothing. But what we get to do, notice I said what we get to do, is to sit in our shit. (laughs) We get to sit in our shit. We get to sit here and feel it all. Feel the discomfort of the change of routine. Feel the discomfort of what we cannot control. Feel, F-E-E-L. Feel it all. Feel the anger. Feel the disappointment. Feel the confusion. Just feel it. That's it. Just feel it. And know that when we stay in that state of chronic overwhelm, We panic. We're not in a state of manifestation. We're not in a state of action. Our energy is not moving towards what we desire. It's moving towards what we do not want. Worry is a prayer for what we don't want. Have faith that this is happening for you. Have faith that you get opportunity. You get opportunity to sit in your shit. We busy ourselves so much. We overpack our schedules so much to avoid feeling. To avoid feeling your shit. So here you are. Here you are. With nothing to do. Here you are being forced to pause. So for everyone who says, I cannot meditate. The world is forcing us to have many mindful moments right now. You are being asked to pause. You are being asked to say no to obligations. You are being asked to strip away everything that you have jammed your calendar with. And yeah, you're still going to have to work. You're still going to have to take care of your children. You're still going to have to continue on this journey. And it's okay. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to be sad. It's okay to be nervous. It's okay that your body and your mind have been shooken up like a snow globe. Now more than ever is the opportunity to get out your pen and your paper and to just write it out. Just get it out. Write out your thoughts. Get them out on paper. Burn it after. Now more than ever is your opportunity to just sit. Sit in your shit. Just sit. Sit with it. Put your belly on your fear. Put your belly on your nervousness. Put your belly on your sadness. Put your belly on your confusion. Put your belly on your discomfort. Put your belly. Why did I say belly? (laughs) Oh, God. Put your hand. That's what I meant. On your belly. Don't put your belly on anything. (laughs) 
Oh, fuck me. Put your hand on your discomfort. Put your hand on your anger. Put your hand on your confusion. Put your hand on your possibility. Put your hand on your opportunity and sit. And just say, how do I want to feel? And then ask yourself, how can I feel that way right now? With my eyes closed, how can I bring in that energy to my body? What does that look like? If I want to feel energized right now, what color exudes energy? Maybe it's blue, maybe it's white. And just see that energy coming into your body. And watch how it you know, plays with fear or uncertainty in your body. Just sitting with it. Your life is showing you, you have opportunity right now. You can choose to be the victim and say, poor me, this sucks. Or you can choose to say, fuck, I've been running away from myself for so long. I've been busying myself for so long because I've been avoiding how I want to feel. I've been avoiding that looking at my shit. We are being forced to pause and to slow down. So sit with it. You can do this. It will feel uncomfortable. It will feel messy. It will feel imperfect and that is part of the journey. You cannot control this. But you can control sitting with your breath. You have time. You have time. You have the space. You have the energy. You've just been gifted more time. If you've been gifted more time, why do you think you still do not have time? It is your state of mind that will predict the outcome of this journey. You need to get gritty. You need to get uncomfortable. And yes, it may get worse before it gets better. And what I mean by that is not the disease, but the dis-ease in your mind. The dis-ease in your home. You are being forced to manage your stress. You are being forced to care and love and respect yourself. You are being forced to nurture yourself. You are being forced to spend more time with your children. You are being forced to have your life more organized. You are being forced to be more proactive in your life instead of reactive. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yes, you are. You can do this. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, there have been many questions I've been asking myself of how can I be of service to you? And instead of mulling of the perfect podcast that I could put out, we did decide to do a free Facebook group because this is going to be an ongoing conversation. So head on over to Heather Chauvin, spelled C-H-A-U-V-I-N, my full name, H-E-A-T-H-E-R-C-H-A-U-V-I-N dot com forward slash community. I'm going to repeat this again. Heather Chauvin dot com forward slash community. Um, you can head to that Facebook group community. It is all focused around homeschooling, uh, working from home, very strategic. So it's not a support group. Um, We're going to have Q&As. This is all action oriented because if we're not taking action, we're not making magic happen. Next week, what I'm also going to be doing is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I am offering you I'm not offering you anything, but I'm putting something on the podcast. Um, Last week, and I haven't really talked about it on the podcast, but last week I launched a Getting Out of Your Own Way mini course. It was a free training. There's a beautiful PDF that you can download. So I'm going to put the audio version of it up here, and then you will be able to um, go to the website to get the PDF. So stay tuned for tomorrow. That's going to be... um, coming out for you. That's also going to help you with more strategic action action steps on how to be of service in your life, how to get what you want, how to, you know, everything that I talked to you about today. So if you're like, I don't know how, I don't know how, that is a great place to start. 
you can take the chaos and turn it into beauty. You can be calm in the chaos. You can be cool as a cucumber. But I'm going to tell you right now, fear and worry is a prayer for what we don't want. And at the end of this podcast, you're also going to hear a little snippet from a conversation that I was having with Kathy Heller. She is the author of Don't Keep Your Day Job. And it just so happened that on Friday, she was coming into my um, in my mastery coaching group to talk to the ladies about, um, you know, your purpose and fear and all of that. And she's a beautiful soul. And she also has her podcast, Don't Keep Your Day Job, which is amazing. You need to go listen to it. So I took a snippet from that conversation um, just talking about fear. And it was a really, really good one. So listen to the remainder of this podcast Uh, to learn more about that conversation and just know you are not alone. You're not alone. We got this. Welcome, Kathy. Thank you. I mean, um, first of all, I just want to acknowledge what is going on right now. It is very intense. Everybody is affected by this and um, it's a lot. It's a lot. My kids are not in school anymore. Um, as of yesterday, they canceled school for the next six weeks. So my kids are home. So they're building forts and they are right now painting and there's like a preschool going on in my living room. So you might get a little wave from one of them. We'll see. My husband is here too, but you know, there's a difference between men and women hanging out with kids. So we'll see if one of them sneaks through. So they're here and um, it's, it's, there's a lot of things going on. So I just want to acknowledge that because it seems a little strange to me to just dive in and be like, cool, like let's talk about building a business right now and all the things. Um, But I do want to say something that is also happening right now because of this situation. In general, we live in an empathy deficit. That's a fact. In general, the loneliness is already higher than it's ever been in the world. There's more depression and there's more suicide than ever. And that has nothing to do with coronavirus. That's been happening uh, for the last decade. So I feel like when they zig, we need to zag. And I mean, what it really comes down to, and then we're going to get into fear. We'll get into some strategies around what to do, like what on earth can you possibly do to elevate your life, to elevate your consciousness, to elevate your business? And we're going to talk a little bit about that and hopefully I can add some value. But one thing that I can tell you is that every single one of us is capable of showing up and offering empathy to other people. And if I really, and I'm not just saying it because it sounds like a nice thing to say, if I really strip back my business and said, how have I been able to make a multi seven figure living? It's empathy. And we can talk about what that looks like when I do a launch for something. We can talk about what that looks like in my podcast. We can talk about what that looks like in my book. But we are all capable of really showing up for four people. And right now, the opportunity is massive. People are going to be home people are going to have a lot more time to connect actually. And because we live in this time, thank God we live in a season. In 1982, it wasn't this way. But right now, because of this thing and because of this thing, this computer, there's no excuse for us not to use the time to show up for people. And so in one way, you could say this is the worst time for our lives. It's the worst time for our business. I mean, honestly, in my lifetime, Disneyland is closed. Disneyland has only closed in the history of Disneyland four times. And the other three times were for one day. It closed after 9-11 to, for lots of reasons, mostly to be in solidarity for a day. It closed. Um, we don't have to get into it. The point is, it's it's closed for the foreseeable weeks. Like that's insanity. Like that's that's how you know. What does that mean? Everyone's home. What does it mean? Let me tell you something. We're going to now start to segue into our topic. The most contagious thing is not the coronavirus. It's fear. Fear is the most contagious thing that ever existed. 
This is why certain people get elected to power. This is why certain people um, have strategies that they think work, right? Um, It's all predicated on fear, right? When you go back and you look at like the Nazi party, like why did this work? It's just the more you literally talk and talk and talk about what people should be afraid of and you tell them what to be afraid of, it spreads, right? So I feel 100% certain that the biggest problem we're facing in this moment is the fear, okay? Because fear is so bad for your immune system. Most people we know, thank God, will not get this virus just based on statistics alone. And most people who get it, like Tom Hanks and his sweet, beautiful wife, I mean, if anything happens to those two people, the world will fall apart. They're two of the most special people in all of Hollywood. It's like the the king and queen of Hollywood. It doesn't matter. The point is, they're most likely going to be completely fine. They came on yesterday to say, we're really okay. Like this virus for most of us will look like this, where they're like still in their t-shirts, just like hanging out in their like nice hotel room, but they're really okay. So what really is the threat? fear. That's the threat. And we look, look how quickly, right? Now, look, there's good reason. I, a week ago, I was supposed to have a huge event um, in, in two weeks um, at the Marriott in Beverly Hills, and I was supposed to have a big retreat. I proactively canceled it because I'm part of like, let's flatten the curve. Everyone should just be home for a couple of weeks. Like it's all good. So I'm not saying there's like fake hysteria. Like I believe that we should all stay the heck home for a while. Like I think that that would be the best thing. I wish that the president would come out and be like, everyone should stay home. I think it's a really good idea. But the point is, the thing that I'm most concerned about is not that people are going to get sick. Most people won't even know that they're sick if they are. Look how quickly the world ramps into fear and all the things that that does, the hysteria of people feeling like I have to get every single box of pasta. Um, We're never going to be able to have a business again. Everyone's going to go bankrupt. What is it? What is that? And why is it that it takes nothing? Like it takes like a a one day of it and we're there. Everyone feels like they're going to be homeless. Let's all take a deep breath. That is not a fact. Just because you tell yourself something over and over again does not make it true. Thoughts, thoughts are not facts. They're not, they're thoughts. 